Hi folks, we are overjoyed. We are simply over the moon excited to bring you this two-part mini-series on installing plexiglass sliding windows in our outdoor kitchen. Time to look over my shoulder again. I was able to craft and install plexiglass sliding windows for the front of our outdoor kitchen. So folks, here I am outside by the outdoor kitchen and this opening that you can see here over my shoulder, uh, we have two of those, one on either side of the outdoor kitchen. It's getting a bit late now in the season. It is early winter and very, very soon, uh, snow is gonna be flying around and it's very, very windy. And I'm gonna be putting the plexiglass in these openings as a temporary stop measure to keep the, uh, to keep the snow out of the outdoor kitchen. Next spring, when it warms up, I'm going to try and complete the board and batten shutters that I'm going to craft for these uh, for these shutter openings. So for now, as I said, I'm going to cut the plexiglass. It is my first time cutting plexiglass. I've never done it. So hopefully it's going to be a success. Uh, we'll see as we go along and stay with me and we'll follow the process together and enjoy the ride and all that. Kind There's of stuff. one of the openings that I'm going to be putting a board and batten shutter on uh, next spring, summer. But for now, I'm going to be putting a piece of plexiglass in there that's going to keep the snow out and the wind. And it's also going to probably warm up our outdoor kitchen a bit so that we can actually come out here uh, during, uh, during January, February and March the coldest months of the year and enjoy our outdoor kitchen. Enjoy our Blackstone, enjoy our Denali three burner stove and enjoy our barbecue. So that's my goal today is to put the plexiglass in that little opening, in this very large opening here and over on this side. And I think, and I think it's going to stop a lot of the wind and most certainly any rain and snow from beating in this outdoor kitchen over the winter months. I'm gonna take my measurements here now, folks. Okay, so I got my tape put up there now we're up in the corner. And I'm gonna come on down here and measure. Here we go, it is exactly three feet and about three eighths of an inch. I always do two measurements. My father always told me, measure twice, cut once. So that's what I'm gonna do here now. Now, let's do the width. Okay, the width of this opening is around 16 inches. And seven eighths, roughly. Okay, I have my measuring tape now set up on the edge of the uh, uh, plexiglass. And the measurements for the opening is 16 and three quarters. So I'm gonna mark that off here now, uh, using, as I said, my Sharpie. Okay, at the 16 and three quarter inch uh, mark here. Okay. Okay, so there you go, as I said, uh, the pencil wouldn't be much good for this. So I've, paced, I've placed uh, three marks now on this plexiglass. Going to use my uh, four foot level here now. Okay, I wanna make sure that the three marks that I made on the plexiglass are visible. And you should be able to see I've them. made a black mark using the Sharpie on this piece of plexiglass. I am ready now to take this over to the table saw and the saw. Now, like I said earlier, at the beginning of this video, I have never ever cut plexiglass on a table saw. I don't know even if it's going to work. Once it goes through the table saw, that might crack and fall to pieces, or it might make a really, really nice straight cut, and then this plexiglass will be great. Hopefully, I won't ruin it. So I'm measuring the scrap piece here now, folks, on this piece of plexiglass. Bear with me. Uh, need to set my table saw at five and three quarter inches. So oh, here's a guide on my table saw. And if you follow along, I have my table saw set at the five and three quarter mark. So I'm gonna lock uh, my, uh, my fence in place. Okay, on both sides. Got that done. Down underneath here, I'm gonna set the uh, going to lock the arm to keep everything all secure. The blade is down in my saw right now. I always do that. I always put my blades down and that way uh, the blades don't get injured or broken when various things are probably put on this table saw. It's also a good, uh, a good safety measure to always put your blade down. This plexiglass is about maybe a quarter of an inch. Okay, so 
I'm going to bring my blade up just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. Not much, just a little bit above. And that's a great safety measure too. There's no need to bring your blade all the way up. It's a danger waiting to happen. You know, you can lose fingers and stuff like that. So always bring your table saw blade up just a little tiny fraction above whatever you are cutting on your table saw. A really good safety measure. So I've got my blade ready, got my fence all ready. So I'm ready now to push that piece of plexiglass through the table. But on my safety glasses, first of course. Okay, here's my daisies going on. Okay, hopefully you're paying attention folks, and this is gonna be a success. Only time will tell. table saw it is a fairly new blade and that's very important too I guess when you're cutting things like this like plexiglass it is important to have a nice sharp blade and that blade certainly did the job okay so I got one piece cut the length now it's a bit longer than I need so I got to cut a little bit off the bottom so I need to uh, readjust and uh, take some more measurements and hopefully you can join me for that I'll set up again to take this bit off the width of it there Got my, uh, got my saw set up, my guide, uh, my fence is all set up, my blade is up, ready to start. So I've got my safety glasses on, all ready to try this one. Until my saw comes to a complete stop before reaching across my table to take the piece out. Okay, did a good job also cutting out that little short piece. I actually now have uh, the, uh, the piece of plexiglass cut the size for the first opening in the outdoor kitchen. Now, before I poke it in and put it into space, there's a little, there's a few burrs and uh, and well, it could be plastic splinters. So I'm going to run uh, a bit of sandpaper over these edges now and to smooth them out a little bit. And then I'm going to dry fit it, and hopefully I have it the right size. So, I have the piece of plexiglass here now ready to, uh, to sand. As I said, I'm going to sand the edges of this piece of plexiglass. I'm going to take it over to my uh, camouflage covered table to do that kind of work. You shouldn't use your table saw as a workbench or table. It's just not a safety thing to do. Uh, I have my blade put down as you can see because I no longer need my blade right now. I will need it soon to cut the other pieces but for now I have it put back down inside the table where it belongs and I'm going to take this piece of plexiglass over to my table and do the sanding over there. Uh, cleaner into it. I have my shop paper towels here and I'm just going to uh, to wash this uh, plexiglass over on both sides. I'll just gently put some of this stuff on there so hopefully uh, I'll do a good job here and now and clean up any of the old dust and sawdust that's on this so that it's a nice uh, a nice clear piece of plexiglass. I know there's some scrapes onto this because it is used but you know when you get stuff for free you really can't be choosy 
and I got this one for free from a friend of mine. So I'm just gonna clean it up. And like I said, it'll do the job for the rest of the winter now. It'll keep the weather out for sure. Hey, I'm gonna dry fit it here now, folks. I think it'll fit. Okay, my measurements are good. Okay. Okay, I think that's pretty cool. A good fit. Now, all I need to do now is get some uh, some trim. I'm just gonna put some trim uh, along both the sides, the lengthwise. I, I'm not gonna bother to put any on top or on the bottom right now. I don't wanna put too many holes in this box around this opening. Uh, because later on in the spring, I'm going to put some shutters on here and I don't want to have to do too much repairing. So I'll just put some trim on both sides, lengthwise, with a few finishing nails, and that should be good for the winter. And I'm going to get my trim ready. Three quarter uh, cold trim, and uh, this came from the old church. So I am reusing, reclaiming this, you, this old trim and going to be using it now um, to put around the, uh, the opening out here just outside my garage around that opening there for the outdoor kitchen. The plexiglass is just laid up against the wall there. So, going to cut this trim now to size. I got my miter saw all set up here. Got my various tools, my measuring tape, pencil this time, and I have my daisy uh, safety glass, of course, very important. And over here, I have my hammer, and in this container here, uh, I do have some finishing nails that I'm gonna use to secure this trim around the opening of this uh, opening here for the other kit. Cut one, uh, one piece to length, and I'm gonna be using that one now as a guide. I have my miter saw all set up, so just to bring the blade down now, and as I said, the other one is there as a guide, so it should be a perfect cut and a perfect length. Reclaim cold trim or molding to both sides of this opening in the outdoor kitchen. Uh, going to put the piece of plexiglass in soon. I uh, just go inside here now. I still have a couple of more pieces to go on after I put in the piece of plexiglass to keep it in. Got a few of my finishing nails here and my hammer. So I'm going to get ready now to put in the piece of plexiglass uh, against these two pieces of trim that's for the outside. And then I'll put on the inside pieces. Look at that. Look how smart that looks, eh? It's in there perfect. Okay, so I've got my other two pieces of trim. They're gonna go on there like that. Put a few finishing nails. Okay, let me get those in there. And I'll have this one done. And all that will remain will be the other side. Okay, just keep them nice and tight. I'm only just using three finishing nails, one on the bottom and one on the top, and then one in the middle. Okay, nice and tight. Okay, and I'm not driving my finishing nails home either, so that come the spring, I can easily take this off. Okay, that side done. Let's do the other side. Easy peasy. Nothing to it. Okay. Up on the top. And one for the middle. Okay, nice and solid looking. I uh, got the trim put on either side. Okay, the trim going up and down on this side, and the trim going up and down on this side. Now, there's uh, nothing on the bottom here, and if I if I do get any weather, then I'll put a piece along there, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it, okay? Same thing up here on the top, okay? I'm just gonna leave that open as well. And like I said, if I get any weather, then I'll probably, probably put a piece of trim up there, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it. This one is finished, and my next job is to go over and do this one next to the greenhouse and our raised bed vegetable garden. We're gonna do that one next. Okay, so I just completed the second uh, small opening uh, for our outdoor kitchen uh, with the uh, with the trim and the uh, and the plastic glass or plexiglass. Okay, so that one's done, and this one is done over here. So I got both of those done. The large opening 
we're doing a little bit different. I, I don't have a big piece of plexiglass that can fit this opening. So I'm going to be putting in two shorter ones and hopefully I'm going to be able to slide them uh, so that on a nice day in the winter, when we're having a barbecue, I can slide the uh, I can slide the window to one side, to the right or to the left, uh, so that some of the smoke and some of the heat from the barbecue can get outside. So I'm going to be doing that a little bit differently, and I want to take you inside now in my garage and into my table saw and show you exactly how I'm doing that. These are the pieces of plexiglass that I have, and as I said, neither one is large enough to cover the entire opening for the front of the outdoor kitchen. So I'm making two smaller ones and then hopefully I'll be able to slide them to one side or to the right or to the left, uh, depending. Now, here's what I'm doing a little bit differently. I've got some of this scrap uh, tongue and groove uh, lumber here and uh, I'm cutting the tongue and groove off of it and I'm going to put a track. I'm going to saw a track in the bottom uh, piece and in the top piece so that the shorter pieces of plexiglass can fit in the track and I'll be able to slide the pieces back and forth through these two pieces of lumber here and in the track. I'm not sure what I'll use yet, some type of oil or uh, some type of grease uh, that I'll use in order to slide the pieces of plexiglass in the, uh, in the grooves and uh, we'll see how that works out when we get there. Okay, so I've cut this one to length now for the opening. Okay, it's done. And I've already cut the groove part off of this one. Okay, so that can be put aside and used uh, and used for kindling in either this stove or the, uh, the Pacific Energy wood stove that we installed professionally at the old church. Go check that video out anyway. Uh, we have a beautiful, beautiful video on how to install a Pacific Energy wood stove. And that's on our YouTube channel. So like I said, go check that out. Now, I'm getting ready to cut the tongue off of this piece. And I got my saw all set up here uh, for to take off about three eighths of an inch. And that will leave me then with a nice, uh, a nice board, a nice plank to run a groove through. I'll find my safety glasses and then I'll be right back. Okay, here's my daisies. I gotta put those on folks. Very important. Okay, I got my daisies on. This is, a, this is, as I said, the bottom one or the top one. And I've got another piece here now. I'm gonna do that also. This was, as I said, a piece of uh, a piece of tongue and groove that I had left over from the material that I bought in order to uh, in order to craft a couple of board and batten doors. And this was a bit in rough shape, missing part of the tongue and missing part of the groove. But if I cut the tongue and the groove off, it, uh, it serves a great purpose for what I want it for now. Now, I have to take this one, go down to my miter saw, saw this one the length, and then come back and, uh, and cut the tongue and groove off the one for the top. So I got my two pieces of lumber sawed here down to the right length for the top part and the bottom part of the opening. As I said, I'm going to cut a track through the middle of these uh, two pieces of lumber uh, that for the uh, plexiglass pieces to fit in. Now, here's the two pieces of plexiglass that I'm gonna cut. And as I said, neither one of them is long enough uh, to fit the opening. So I have to make two short ones and I'm gonna be sliding them in the track. Now, if I put these two together, uh, side by each, okay? Uh, it's a little bit less than an half inch thick, two of them. So. If I cut a track in these two pieces that, that is exactly in half, uh, they should be able to slide freely in the track and still be close enough together to keep out the weather, the rain, and the snow when they're fully closed. Okay, so, uh, so let's get ready and cut the track for these two pieces of lumber. And for that, folks, you will have to watch episode two. Join me now in our outdoor kitchen for a little chat enjoyed the episode one of our two-part series, mini-series really, on installing plexiglass windows for our outdoor kitchen. 
part two, episode two, will be coming very, very soon. It was getting a little too long, folks. I think it's over 20 minutes now for part one. Part two will be just as long, and we hope you stay and watch the entire two-part uh, episodes for the installation of our plexiglass windows. See you in part two, folks, and thank you ever so much for tuning into our YouTube channel and watching our videos. We appreciate that so very, very much. Thank you again, and see you in part two.